glass has found me in my life. It hasn't let me go. It came to me when I was 14 years old and I was asked to help a neighbour with some glass work. So one of the, the things I really love about glass is its fragility. It's so brittle, it can be cut and it's dangerous, it's sharp, it's jagged, it slices you, it's almost a weapon to me. The nature of glass, that it's luminous, it's so versatile, it's so tactile, it's soft, it's lustrous. It pulls me back in so drastically that I've formed my life around glass. Hi, I'm Kirsten Lakin. I'm a glass artist and I'd like to take you on a little adventure with me through the world of glass, the spirit of glass. Spirit of glass is the essence of glass, its luminosity, the colour, light, fragility and the strength of glass, its organic nature of glass. It encompasses all things glass, from flat, sculptural, cut, moulded, things from lead light, stained glass, copper foil, sandblasted, formed and fused glass. What inspires me is the land and the wildlife around me as well as what's happening in the world and how I'm feeling. The hills inspire me a lot. It's the greenery, the wildlife, the light. The light is just beautiful up in the hills. It just brings out the spirit so that I can just create freely and make works that mean something to me. So I gather my creativity from my feelings, my emotions, where I'm heading in life, what I've just experienced. Those things sort of urge me into creating a new piece of artwork. I start with a concept first. So it's the feelings that are exploding out of me. And then I start working on colors, and I work on designs and then it's the techniques that come into play and how I'm going to express those feelings through the glass, whether it's painted, whether it's, uh, it's a moulded, fused and formed piece of work, whether it's going to be a hanging piece, whether it's a light, whether it's a wall hanging that can be inside the house and not against a window, or whether it needs to be lit from behind and express that light that's coming through it. The Cathedral of Light was a piece I made during lockdown and it gave me something sort of cheery and light and, and uplifting to make whilst devastation and pestilence is happening all through the world. I was inspired to make this also by my boss and part teacher, Donna Kennedy, and she said, wouldn't it be nice to make a house of glass? And I thought, let's go up one stage. Let's make it a cathedral. So I had a box full of bevels. So I've used all of those and I've cut some in half and I created a beautiful little side angle for the walls and the roof and the, the ceiling and a, a bell tower. Okay, it's a cathedral, but let's add a chandelier anyway. And I put together this beautiful little chandelier. And I thought the whole cathedral needs light. It is light in itself as, as in it's clear. But let's make it shine. So everywhere they're selling nowadays LED strips. And I've cut them and rejigged them with my electrician brother to make them legal and I've laid them all inside the house so that when we turn on the lights, the whole house just glows. It needed to be on a base so that I can move it. So I created a beautiful base for it and I learnt the craft of parquetry. Then we just lift the whole parquetry floor up and we move him all together. So that was finally 
a completed piece. As a glass artist, I have other interests as well. Being able to step out into my garden, spend hours weeding, picking my fruit and vegetables from my trees and my veggie patch, collecting flowers from my garden beds. I love sewing, I love embroidery, I love cooking. I have many, many different interests and all of these fill me so that I can come into the studio and create my glassworks. When I'm working on the idea of a piece, I'll look at the pieces that I've got available to me. So I bring in a lot of used and recycled, reclaimed items. And I'll bring those to life. So whether the pieces become a 3D panel to enhance that panel, or whether they stay flat because of their nature, will push me or pull me in a, a certain direction where I can start working on that panel as a whole. I have a fascination with mythological beasts and creations of part animals, part other beings. And I created Jackalope. Both my boys are fabulous at collecting things for their mum. I love them dearly because they come and bring me pieces that uh, they find on farms and out on their adventures four wheel driving. And they came home with these beautiful horns. And I just thought straight away, Jackalope has to be a, a, a beautiful hare with these fantastic horns coming off him. And I created him on a 3D panel so that he pops out. He's got that depth and that beautiful fur-like fashion that a rabbit will have or a hare will have, but then I've twisted it and I've managed to copper foil in those antlers so that they're stuck in there forever and they pop out from the frame and they show you this, this magical creature, this mystical creature that sort of just comes out at you and I love him immensely. He's beautiful. Every single day of my life, my brain is always working on what can be used. My husband and I love going to markets, love going to antique stores, thrift shops, op shops, places like that. We'll look at ceramics, we'll look at surgical instruments, taxidermy, skulls, Ceramic doll pieces, love doll pieces. They, they're incorporated in my work a lot. History, anything that's got a bit of history in it. Clock parts, watches, steampunk things. The steampunk movement grabbed me straight away. It's already a part of me that has always found objects and brought them together. To blend them with glass is fabulous. I just really enjoy pulling those together and creating an image that is sci-fi, is a bit vintage, is a little bit out there. One of my pieces, The Goddess of the New Age, is mildly steampunk and it contains beautiful porcelain doll's parts that I found at markets. Then I've used also a beautiful plate that I broke in half and painted and formed flat. I'd found that at the op shop and it has beautiful little ducks in it and a, a skyline and a tree and so on. Um, incorporating in that as well is a sweet little wine glass that I've melted down and it's formed a, a sweet little mushroom and so the tree grows from that. The organic materials, they come into all my artworks because of the area that I live in. I can't leave that alone. It will come into every aspect that I work in. 
it'll come into my steampunk work where I'll use greens, where I use foliage, whether I put organic material in between glass and encapsulate it and it's hidden in the background there or whether I'm painting little mushrooms at the base of something. My artwork, Eve's Diary, was from a book by Mark Twain about how Adam and Eve meet and how Eve is so frustrated by Adam and how she throws rocks at him and she tries to whack the stars out of the sky with a stick and in the end they fall in love. And I've created that piece by using representatives of the Bible. So I've got passion fruit flower seeds that I've placed in between the glass and fused in the glass. So they're trapped in there. I've also cut slices of apples. The apple being the, the first bitten piece to induce evil. And I've placed them in between the glass and they're burnt out into ash and they're trapped within that glass. I've brought in grass seeds that show the Earth's beginnings. You'll find this a really interesting piece to see. I have two sides to myself in a respect. A very dark side, and it can get very dark, and a very, very light side, which is really, really light. <laughs> it's a beautiful side as well as my dark side. That is a very beautiful side as well. I love medieval images. I love looking into why we have this theory of the devil, of death, of Adam and Eve, of our theory of life. The piece I created, Pan, is a very dark piece. He's, he's painted in black and he's painted multiple times to show such a depth of darkness. And he's got ram's horns. That piece there was created to work out how dark I could take the paint, the stained paint, and how light I could make the light sections of that piece. Then to create something that's very dark, but very appealing. When I'm, I'm creating those works as well, I always consider the traditional forms of where stained painting and where all the melted glass and formed glass comes from. I use those basic techniques which are centuries old or hundreds of years old. I'll use them in a contemporary way to get my ideas across. Always going back to the basics of, of tradition and how those elements are used, all those techniques are used. And then I'll build them and I'll stretch them and create them into what I feel I need to use them for. The Gypsy Girl that I've created is just such a highlight of my life, of my career. And I worked very, very hard on creating a very representational piece of work. When we're stain painting, we layer the paint down and then take away what we don't want. We don't layer the paint where we want it and only there. We put it over the entire surface of the glass and then we re start removing it. So the Gypsy Girl has 14 layers of paint on her and each layer of paint gets fired in the kiln before the next layer of paint goes down. The glass opens up a minuscule amount and it draws the stained paint into it and it locks it in as it's cooling and then it's forever trapped in the glass. That's the traditional way, nothing has changed in hundreds of years, still used exactly the same. Because the tradition of, of glass goes back to the history of, of churches and the creation of the stained painting and the colours have meanings, a blue virginity with the uh, Virgin Mary, we've got the red robes, we've got all those purple colours that represent royalty. I use them within my works, but I use them in a modern form and I quite often give them a little twist so that I will use the blue in a Virgin Mary, but I'll put it in a fairy tale so that I can combine those two and give it a modern twist and just give my little opinion on how I relate to religion, 
tradition, contemporary, modern thoughts, everything that sort of encompasses into one of my artworks has lots of many twists in it. Nice. So there's two forms of my artworks. There's the commissions and there's my personal artworks which head off to galleries and, and places for sale as well. My artworks attract the type of person that I like making an artwork for. When someone's commissioned me to create a work for them, I listen very clearly to what they need from me. And I'll listen to them in what they need from the glassworks. So whether it's a solitude, whether it's a calmness, whether they need something very vibrant and modern, contemporary. Maybe it's a large architectural work, or maybe it's just a small artwork that will be in a window or on a wall. I like to think of myself as a very broad-minded person. I love that the world today has opened up doors for opening views and seeing people for who they are. The LGBTQ plus region, pride, they're all really important to me. Everybody in this, this studio is welcome. I love bringing culture into this studio. I love having my mind opened by those teaching me the ways of the world for today. It's really important that I know and understand you all so that I can cater for this as well as grow as a person. My own personal classes held in this studio in Fern Creek are designed specifically for my students. The teaching side of my business has been there from the very beginning. I love teaching, I love sharing my information and all my knowledge with somebody. There's been a huge explosion in the interest in my classes and in that I need to narrow down the classes that I'm taking on. I'll be catering for a very high-end level of student with a great interest in creating and finishing off high-level pieces. This will mean that I can cater just to their needs and give them exactly what they're needing to take into the industry. I take on a minimal amount of students so that they get a one-on-one -on -one almost with me, a maximum of four students in the class. I have such a variety of students and I will help them step by step along the way to achieve what they want to achieve. Glass is fabulous for that because it's powerful. It gives a client or a student so much power to be able to cut glass, to see it break, and then to control where it breaks, to play with colour, to see it change within the light, to put it all together as a finished product, and to look back at it and say, I made that. I bloody well did that all by myself. And that's me. That's everything that I put into it. I also teach at Melbourne Polytechnic in Paran. We have a fantastic, absolutely incredible course set up for the glass industry. It's the only one in Australia, and it's the Australian Central of Glass, through Glass Inc. Our students there are just phenomenal. They're all very, very inspired to work with glass. They see so broadly into the future of where glass can go. It's such a fabulous thing to be part of. And thanks to Donna Kennedy of Glass Inc. to create this incredible school that encompasses so much. It's just such a fabulous opportunity for teachers, for the industry, as well as the students that we take on. <laughs> to teach is to give so much to a student. I love watching people grow, learning new techniques, feeling the power that they get from cutting glass, from creating their own works. That is so fulfilling.
You learn very quickly how to touch the glass, how to handle the glass, how to be safe around it. And it becomes a second nature where I can just pick up and grab glass and, and I can work with it and not worry a single bit about how I'm going to work with it, how it's going to react to me. We become one, glass and I are one. Glass is in my blood. I suppose I can say I even have a heart of glass. Um, fortunately, it's not a broken heart. It's not shattered. It's not fractured whatsoever. It's a good, strong heart of glass.